Hi everyone, I hope you watched my video before this one talking about vocabulary words that are in the story. I just tried to explain to you how you can tell sometimes by the sentence using context clues what the words mean if you're not sure about them. All right, today's chapter is called Children. Once I asked Stella if she'd ever had any babies. She shook her head, I never had the opportunity. Would you have made a good mother? I asked her, I think you would have. Thank you, Ivan, said Stella, clearly pleased. I like to think so. Having young ones is a big responsibility. You have to teach them how to take mud baths, of course, and emphasize the importance of fiber in their diet. She looked away thinking. Elephants are excellent at thinking. I think the hardest part of being a parent, Stella added after a while, would be keeping your babies safe from harm, protecting them. The way silverbacks do in the jungle, I said. Exactly, said Stella. You would have been good at protecting too, I said confidently. I'm not so sure, said Stella, gazing at the iron bar surrounding her. I'm not so sure at all. Mac and George are chatting while George cleans one of my windows. George, says Mac, frowning, there's something wrong with the parking lot. George sighs, I'll take a look at it as soon as I'm done with this window. What's the problem? There are par cars in it. There are lots of cars in it. That's what's wrong, George. Cars. Mac breaks into a grin. I think things are actually starting to pick up a bit. It's got to be that billboard. People like seeing the baby elephant, and they stop and spend their hard-earned money. I hope so, George says. We could all use the business. Mac's right. I have noticed more visitors coming in since he and George added the picture of Ruby to the sign. People crowd around Ruby and Stella's domain, ooing and eyeing at the sight of such a tiny elephant. I gaze out at the huge sign that makes humans stop and spend their hard-earned cash. I have to admit that the picture of Ruby is rather cute, even if she doesn't look like a real elephant. I could use a few oohs and ahs myself. Ivan, tell me another joke, please, says Ruby after the two o'clock show. I think I might have run out of jokes, I admit. A story then, said Ruby. Aunt Stella's sleeping and there's nothing to do. I tap my chin. I'm trying hard to think, but then I gaze up at the food court skylight. I'm mesmerized by the elephant-colored clouds galloping past. Ruby taps her foot impatiently. I know. I'll tell you a story. A real live true one. Good idea, I said. What's it about? It's about me, Ruby says. How I fell into a hole, a big hole. Humans dug it. Bob pricks his ears and joins me by the window. I always enjoy a digging out of a hole story, he says. It was a big hole full of water near the village. I don't know why humans made it, said Ruby. Sometimes you just need to dig for the sake of digging, says Bob. We were looking for food, said Ruby, my family and I, but I wandered off and I got lost and went too close to the village. Ruby looks at me with eyes wide. I was so scared when I fell into that hole. Of course you were, I said. I would have been scared too. Me too, said Bob, and I like holes. The hole was huge. Ruby pokes her trunk between the bars and makes a circle in the air. And guess what? She doesn't wait for an answer. The water was all the way up to my neck, and I was sure I was going to die. I shudder. What happened next? I'll tell you what happened, said Bob. They captured her and put her in a box and shipped her off, and here she is, just like they did with Stella. He pauses to scratch an ear. Humans. Rats have bigger hearts. Roaches have kinder souls. No, Bob, Ruby interrupts. You're wrong. The humans helped me. When they saw I was trapped, they grabbed ropes and they made loops around my neck and my tummy. And the entire village helped, even the little kids and grandmas and grandpas, and they all pulled and pulled. Ruby stops. Her lashes are wet, and I know she must be remembering all the terrible feelings from that day. And they saved me, she says in a whisper. Bob blinks. They saved you? When I was finally out, everyone cheered, said Ruby. And the children fed me fruit. And then all those humans led me back to my family. It took the whole day to find them. I'm just trying to adjust this camera. Okay, because the sun's in my eyes a little bit. 
No way, said Bob. It's true, said Ruby, every word. Of course it's true, I said. I've heard rescue stories like that before. It's Stella's voice. She sounds weary. Slowly she makes her way over to Ruby. Humans can surprise you someday. They're unpredictable. Bob still looks unconvinced, but Ruby's here now. If humans are so swell, who did this to her? I sent Bob a grumpy look. Sometimes he doesn't know when to be quiet. Ruby swallows. I'm afraid she's going to cry. But when she speaks, her voice is strong. Bad humans killed my family, and bad humans sent me here. But that day in the hole, it was good humans that saved me. It doesn't make any sense, said Bob. I just don't understand them. I never will. You're not alone, I say, and I turn my gaze back to the racing gray clouds. Stella's foot hurts too much for her to do any hard tricks for the two o'clock show. Instead, Mac pulls her limping into the ring where she tracks a circle in the sawdust. Ruby clings to her like a shadow. Ruby's eyes go wide when Snickers jumps off Stella's back and leaps onto her head. At the four o'clock show, Stella can only get as far as the entrance to the ring. Ruby refuses to leave her side. At the seven o'clock show, Ruby stays in her domain. When Mac calls for Ruby, Stella whispers something in her ear. Ruby looks at her pleadingly, but after a moment, she follows Mac into the ring. Ruby stands alone. The bright lights make her blink. She flaps her ears. She makes her tiny, tr tiny trumpet sound. The humans stop eating their popcorn. They clap. They coo. Ruby is a hit. I don't know if I should be happy or sad. So what do you think Stella whispered to Ruby when she got Ruby to go out into that um, ring all by herself? Oh.